I really do wish this project was as easy as doing the introduction to this video. Sometimes things just don't work out that way. Let's be realistic. We'll say it, we hope people will watch it, and they'll want to do it too. But let me just tell you, you find a piece in the trash, like I did, and then you take it home and quickly evaluate it for repairs. And the next thing you know, you're looking at the supplies to get the project done, like a drill, fabric, scissors, a stapler, no sew adhesives, or your sewing machine, or even screws, foam, plywood. Yeah, going to the store to get plywood cut three times. The first time, there was no one there. The second time, the saw was out of order. And then the third time, you have your list. You've got multiple projects. Just cut this large piece of plywood for all three of my projects and I won't have to come back anytime soon. And that's what I call being realistic. Hi everyone, welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I'm Catherine. Today is a good day for me to get caught up on some projects in the garage. The weather warmed up just a tad and with the addition of a small heater, I can get this bench done today. So guys, I wanna say if you've got some indoor projects that maybe you can get done, maybe you just carve out a corner in a room, get these small furniture transformations done and when spring gets here, you can just decorate like crazy on a budget. So we're gonna hop into the garage. We've got our work cap on and no makeup day. Let's go ahead, let's go to work. I was so excited to get started. I'm using all of the original corner brackets and screws. I didn't have to buy any additional hardware. So I'm really excited about that. That's the one thing why you want to examine these pieces. What can you recycle? Now this is a very structural sound piece and I'm excited about that. So I just went ahead and cleaned it up with some Murphy oil soap on a damp cloth and I took it into the dining room just to see how it would fit into the space. Put a quick rug down and I liked what I saw and I knew I was going to go ahead and dive right into the project. Now, running the risk of failing at upholstery terminology, I'm just gonna dive in. This board right here was a little loose and I noticed there were two of them on opposite sides. So with this bench being so long, I decided to remove them from the ends of the bench and move them toward the middle of the bench. So why am I moving these boards? Well, in my opinion, the middle of the bench tends to get the most work. That's where most people tend to sit. And that's where most of your benches seem to sag. Now I have Gorilla Construction Glue attaching that board to the side of the bench. And for extra reinforcement, I am using corner brackets. And the black screw here is the original screw. So it's basically acting as a pilot screw. So I can apply the one that comes with the corner bracket with ease into the board. So I put one of these corner brackets on each side, one's high and one's low. So I'm not overworking the same location. Now having fallen in love with construction glue, I make sure that I have plenty of it on hand, the Gorilla brand of course, and I was a little concerned about one of the corners so I did apply some glue there as well as a few additional screws and then I clamped it in place overnight just taking a precaution and if you feel that way about any area of your piece take the precaution apply the construction adhesive and wait 24 hours So the very next day is really all about the seat cushion, but I know you're going to notice that the bench has actually been painted. This is my homemade recipe for chalk paint. There's a very old video out there that I will find and link to this video. Now, I just painted it because I wanted a base coat on it. So maybe later on, I might want to remove the skirt, which is what this is, a skirted bench video, and then add a base coat of or even a finished coat of maybe a pearl or a seashell, something that will match my dining room chairs. So with that flexibility in mind, I wanted to go ahead and do this right now. So this is the point in which you would add your stains or even just add your polyurethane, whatever you wanted to add to the bench. This is the point in which you would do it before you add your seat cushion. 
Well, I decided not to have the board overlap the bench, so I knew I needed to make a cut. So I got out my little Roto Razor saw. I love this. I mean, I can handle it. It fits right into my hand, and it can really cut a wood that's almost an inch thick. So pretty easy to follow a straight line with that small little opening there right on my pencil mark, and I can just get it done. So I made the cut right here in the garage. I should have taken this step, but I didn't. I should have applied pilot hose in those corner brackets using a one half inch screw and then when it was time to put the board on top of the bench permanently I wouldn't have had to drill the holes straight into the bench but I was comfortable doing that and you may not be so please use a one half inch screw to make pilot holes. Now here's another thing that you all don't have to do like painting that I did. I rounded the edges of my board and I sanded them down as well. I would advise you also to make notes on your boards like the measurements so if you decide to do this project again and just replace the board you have the measurements written on the bottom. Use symbols so you can put everything in the right direction every single time. Now my phone measures 52 inches long and it is a three inch foam. I got it from Joann's and I paid around $40 for it. Next I placed my foam on the floor and I used a sharpie to mark it. My electric knife is the cheapest one they had at Walmart. It's around $10 and it does an amazing job. My advice is to cut all the way through the foam when you are cutting, not halfway, but all the way and you'll get a nice clean cut. I like a nice curved edge to the foam, just like I did on my dining room chairs. So I decided to do the same thing, a nice beveled edge on the foam. And you really don't have to make a large cut to achieve this. And again, another step that's optional for you. Now I am not a fan of spray adhesives they just make me itch I can't even talk about it without wanting to itch but anyway guys I would like using a little tiny bit of hot glue very thin lines of it you know just along the edges maybe about two inches or so away from the corner it works like a charm and it does hold your foam in place for you Now just roll your batting over the top of the foam and make sure you have enough to have at least two inches of it tuck underneath the actual board. You want to have that so that you can staple it down or glue it down. And then you just cut. That's it for the batting. You know, you lay the corner. You have some a little bit longer on the other side, but that's fine. And that's how you don't waste batting because if you're like me, you're bound to need it again and again. Now I don't want to add tons of staples into my board so I am using again hot glue to apply my batting and I'm very lightly applying the hot glue. I mean very lightly so this is just enough to hold it in place because I'm going to come right behind this and add fabric and staple it down. A word of advice, don't apply any hot glue around the corners of the board. Now this bench is 52 inches. The fabric is 56 inches. So basically I'm able to just place the bench on top of the fabric and use only three quarters of a yard. And I'm allowing for about two inches to come over the front and the back of the bench. And of course on the sides having that 56 inches versus the 52 inches in the fabric, that's gonna be a great help. But I will need to stretch this fabric just a little bit I made my one cut and I nailed down the sides of the fabric using very small nails and I'm going to remove those when I apply the staples. Securing the fabric with those small nails on the sides of the bench cushion was a great idea. Look how smooth the fabric looks across the top and that cushion is still going to be very soft. So now let's just start stapling. 
So on the back of my seat cushion board, I've got my tools, my small hammer, my pliers, and I've got my weld stretcher there. I've got my stapler remover, my scissors, extra staples, and I'm good to go. The bowl is there in case I have to remove a stapler, a staple, and I need a place to put it. And I like the sound of them hitting the bowl so I know they're not landing on the floor. And these stretchers are perfect, guys. They take the pressure off of your thumb, your palm, and your wrist. Just a good pinch of the fabric and they hold them in place. To staple the fabric, I start in the center and then I go to the left and right of my center staple and work my way down to five inches away from the actual corner. I don't staple all the way to the corner and you'll see why. I wanted to learn a different way of doing the corners on these pieces. So this is really a determined learning process for me. Now, while I'm stapling the fabric, I am paying very close attention to the tension that I put on the fabric with those stretchers. If I see that I'm creating a bit of a dimple in the foam, then I know I'm holding it too tight because I only want one smooth line. So pay attention to that, whether you're using pliers or whether you're using your fingertips. Just notice how tight you're holding the fabric because it can appear a little bit wavy in the foam and things look a little more homemade when you do it that way. As I mentioned earlier, you don't staple all the way down the side. Just stop about five inches short of your corner. Now you can use pliers or you can just gently use your thumb and your forefinger to pull the fabric around the corner. And just make sure there's this nice smooth curve there and then apply one or two staples there at the corner. Again, pliers or your fingers, but make sure that you're not putting a lot of pressure with your fingers. You don't wanna strain them. So I am wiggling the fabric fabric a little bit just to make sure the corner edge is smooth and then applying my staple and like I said if you want to use suppliers then please do so and if you see that there's a little dimple or a little ruffle in the fabric then just wiggle it just a little bit until it's smooth along the edge and then apply your staple and that's the new way I wanted to learn to smooth out my corners now am I perfect at it yet no but at least I'm in the game Now listen, if you've never picked up a stapler or a hammer or even a pair of pliers, the time is now because chances are you can do a lot of these minor little updates around your home. Maybe you're not doing a skirted bench like I'm doing today, but I guarantee you, you can cover a seat cushion. We were all designed to create and I am excited to show you every single detail in my videos because if I can do it, you can do it. Here's a secret for you. During those after summer clearance events at Dollar General, they have these large rolls of landscaping fabric. For just a one dollar, I buy every one of them because I know I'm going to have projects. Now, this is where you can say, hey, I just want to do a coffee table, turn one into a bench or just cover a bench. This is your stopping point. You just take your covered seat cushion and just screw it to the top of your bench or coffee table or whatever it is that you are transforming. And guys, this is it. Isn't this beautiful? If I added my finish to this, I could just walk away and say I'm totally done. But isn't that three inch foam worth it? The fabric that I'm using has these gorgeous silver threads in it. Hobby Lobby also has the one with the gold threads in it and it's really pretty. So this is the one that I used when I recovered my dining room chairs and this is the leftover fabric that I'm using on this bench. For my panels, I just draped the fabric and I want to have enough to do a two inch hem and I want to have enough to have two inches at the top that I could staple to the actual bench. I'm not cutting along the sides because I'll just fold those down and if you don't want to add a lining, you can just use stitch witchery to just press in that nice closed seam. 
Now first let me share this. All of the panels, the two for the front and the back, as well as the four for the corners and the two side panels are all 22 inches long. Now back to the corner panels. They're 22 inches long, but after I folded in the sides, they're six inches wide. And that's a good width for those. You can go a little bit wider if you want, but mine are six inches. Let me show you how to make a lining on a very, very small budget. You don't have to use expensive fabric to do upholstery. This inexpensive fabric comes from Joann's and Walmart. It was about the same price. Either way, either place you go, it's going to be about $3 a yard. There are four corner panels here. I pressed them, I pressed the hem, I pressed the sides, and I use those fold lines as guides for measuring out the lining. Yes, I use a pressing cloth especially for upholstery. I lay the panels on top of the lining and that lining is actually folded in half lengthwise and I only needed a small side of one side of the lining fabric. I fold it in half and I fold it in half again. Now we take our panel, right side facing upward, take your lining, lay it on top of the panel, go to your sewing machine, and stitch the sides of the lining to the sides of the panel, but leave an opening of about one inch on the bottom. Now here I'm pinning one of the side panels before I stitch it. I want you to see what I'm talking about, about leaving one inch of an opening at the bottom. You see the bottom part of the lining will be sewn to the edge of the fabric for the hem. This is not complicated. I stitched top to bottom on both of the sides. I left that opening of one inch and then across the bottom I stitched the hem of the fabric to the lining. Now these two large panels are for the front and back of the bench. I don't waste my time cutting away the salvage edge of the fabric. This is underneath and if you're looking underneath my furniture, well, you're not going to be invited back. I did not do the monogramming. I had it done by a professional and isn't it stunning? All of the panels are ready. Step one, attach all of the corner panels. Now, I have been reading some wonderful blogs that really focus around traditional homes, and I am loving the style of benches that are coming out right now. And they are along this line, guys. So the skirted furniture pieces is really making a huge comeback, even though they haven't really gone away. Just everyone just kind of went away from them, but they're headed back this way. 
Now I considered using piping to finish off this bench, but I changed my mind. I decided to use the tack strip a little bit differently this time, and I placed it in between the panel on the fold, and then I stapled it down. So basically the panel will drape over and it'll look a little fluffy, and that way the seam or the line between the seat cushion and the bench isn't so wide. And with the help of a few binder clips, I'm able to hold my panel in place around that tack strip underneath. Now I know this video is long just for a skirted bench, but I know you guys, you will send me emails and pictures and then you will go into the comments area and say, what about this part? You weren't very clear on this or that. So I wanted to do my best to get as much information in this video as possible so I can move on to other projects that you're going to definitely love. Now the front panel and the back panel are much larger than those sides and corner panels. So it will look like it's starting to hang a little crooked. You can adjust that by sliding that fabric around the tack strip. I'm moving that lining up a little bit so that it looks smooth. So that's why I really wanted to do the tack strip method. And once I'm sure everything is hanging straight, I just staple it down permanently. Don't worry about all of these fraying threads hanging from underneath. So here's what I did. I cut away that old fraying edge and I created a new edge. I then folded my new edge back onto the tack strip and I took small amounts of glue and I adhered the fabric to the tack strip. So when the panel is draped back over, you don't see any of that thread. This is what it'll look like after you've added your cushion to the bench. Okay, don't judge me and don't try this at home. This handsome guy is actually a weight for me right now. Remember those pilot holes that I recommend that you make? Well, our son is sitting on the bench to apply pressure while I insert the screws. And the weight from his body will keep the bench in alignment until I'm done. And the screws will not go completely through the seat cushion. Now I'm all about an easy refresh when it's just moving around a few pieces. But I started out in the living room with my new bench and I loved it. It refined the space. It really did. Just a few adjustments with the chair here or there. And I just love that it elevated that space so easy. And secondly, I can put my feet up and enjoy the fireplace in the living room. The second thing I did was move it into our bedroom. And I loved it it refined that space the pillows are from the couch guys so it was just a quick update here and i do work out at the foot of the bed and i have two baskets with weights in them this would be perfect in our bedroom isn't that pretty the other space well rightfully so where i wanted it to be first and foremost was the dining room and i love it here so much but I gotta tell you, when I want to do a refresh, there's no telling where this bench could end up. And I love the way it turned out. I love our monogram and I had two extra panels done so I could make throw pillows for the chairs in the dining room and or when I do a refresh in the living room or bedroom. Isn't that monogram beautiful? Well, I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so today. And remember to ring that bell so you don't miss a single video. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Buckle up, everybody. I've been filming. I just got to take time to do edits. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.